I have demonstrated different kinds of splitting of the second rank tensor and here is one with a strong purpose. Splitting up of stress tensor into isotropic and deviatory components is the title. Here we have got a second rank tensor tau and these are the 9 elements. This can be written as sum of 2 tensors tau 1 1 minus s, tau 1 2 and tau 1 3 intact, tau 2 1 intact, tau 2 2 minus s and tau 2 3 intact, tau 3 1 and tau 3 2 intact and tau 3 3 minus s. And then since we have subtracted s here to add to balance the situation s 0 0, 0 s 0 and 0 0 s. Here we define s as tau 1 1 plus tau 2 2 plus tau 3 3 divided by 3. That means the sum of the normal stress is done and then an arithmetic mean of the applied normal stresses are done and that is called as the small s. So, here this is known as the tau d or the stress deviator or the deviatoric stress matrix and this one is called as a tau s which means it is a spherical tensor. Why do we call it spherical? Because on 3 perpendicular axis along 3 perpendicular axis equal amount of stresses are working. So, if I draw 3 axis of equal length in space this basically indicates a sphere. This is one axis of some length or half of it I can take there is another and the third one. So, that is why it is called as a spherical tensor it is not an ellipsoidal tensor. Now, we can see clearly that this tau is a sum of tau d plus tau s that is what I write here. And out of curiosity if I find out the trace of tau d that means what if I sum these elements tau 1 1 plus tau 2 2 plus tau 3 3 minus 3 s. Once I do 3 s it becomes again tau 1 1 tau 2 2 tau 3 3. So, effectively the trace of the tau d becomes 0 and that is obvious in case of the deviatoric stress which I have already explained in one of my previous uh, presentation. And the trace of the spherical tensor here if I add them up it becomes 3 s. So, these are the properties. Now, why do we break stress deviator and the spherical tensor there is a physical meaning. The stress deviator or the deviatoric stress tries to change the shape of the body. What does it mean? If I take a small cube and we have this magnitude, some of the magnitudes are there, these magnitudes tend to deform the cube into some other shape, not a smaller cube, not a bigger cube will be produced, change in the shape, but it is not guaranteed that it will happen. If the stresses are small and the body is hard, then it will not deform. But there is a tendency of changing the shape cube will no more remain cube if deformation is given. And what about the spherical tensor? The tendency of the spherical tensor is that the material will change its size. A big cube can become a small cube or a small cube can become a bigger cube and does not change in shape. Implicit within this means that if there is a change in size the big cube becomes small cube the density has to increase. Now, these are given from the textbooks and all these textbooks are assuming that the material is uniform in property throughout. If the material is not at all uniform in property, suppose there are layered rocks, then this even under this uh, spherical tensor, the body may change its shape and size. I repeat what I have written from the textbook assumes that the material is having a uniform property which in geological case is not so. In those situations, even if you are applying the equal amount of normal stress in three directions, the body can change its shape and size. Okay. Once I wrote S is equal to this, it can also be written in a different way. S is equal to the Tr tau, that means the trace of tau, these three being added up and then divided by 
3. So that is just another way of representing. Now the exercise for the student is that and students must do, I keep on repeating, just by watching the lecture you cannot uh, learn the subject. You have to, you must use paper and pen. Tau is equal to, I have given some numbers, not one of them is negative and two were zeros. And you have to find out the matrices representing tau d and tau s. This you must do with pen and paper. And again tau, tau d and tau s are all coaxial tensors because when we are defining this and that, we are not changing the x, y, z axis orientation which is same as what was the starting point with the tau tensor. We have seen how the pore pressure alters the stress matrix and we have also seen that the stress matrix can be broken into two parts, the dibiotic stress and the spherical stress tensor. Now both these concepts can be added up and it is very simple. Imagine in a pore pressure case the tau is altered to tau effective because as I have told you tau 1 1 minus pp, pp is the pore pressure, tau 1 2 and tau 1 3 these terms are the shear stresses so they are not altered. The compressive stresses that were applied tau 1 1, tau 2 2 and tau 3 3 are counteracted partially by the extensional stresses pp. So therefore here in this case we are putting pp as a minus sign and this is the expression. We can do right now the trace of the tau effective will be given by the sum of them which I can call as s dash. So what is the difference from the trace of tau from the trace of tau effective here minus 3 pp is the term that has come. Now if I divide trace of tau effective this term divide by 3 that means we made, make arithmetic mean of these 3 uh, numbers then I can write this as average tau yi effective and this will be equal to the average of tau yi these 3 added divided by 3 is the average tau yi and this 3 and that 3 will cancel so therefore I will get simply a pp. Let us call it equation 1 and also now we will see the pp. Now from this expression I can write take pp in this side and take this over that side pore pressure is equal to average of tau yi minus average of tau yi effective and we know that tau yi is more than the average tau yi effective it is understood. Now this tau effective we are going to break into two components one spherical tensor and another is the uh, dibiotic stress tensor. So to do that what I do tau ii minus pp minus average tii effective will be done and we will call it t tau 1 1 dash. Now what is this average tau ii effective? It is done over here average tau ii effective is equal to average tau ii minus pp. So once that is being done and simplified I get tau 1 1 dash is equal to 2 tau 1 1 minus tau 2 2 minus tau 3 3 divided by 3. I get tau 2 2 dash is equal to this and tau 3 3 dash is equal to that. So these three equations can be summarized in this way tau i i dash is equal to 2 tau i i minus tau j j minus tau k k divided by 3 where i if it is 1 it will come back to this equation if i is equal to 2 and those things it comes back here and if i is equal to 3 it comes to this equation. So what has been done? We have found the dibiotic stress tau 1 1 dash, tau 2 2 dash and tau 3 3 dash. Break this tau effective matrix into two components. So this is written over here. Basically I am not writing but it is written here. Now it is broken into tau 1 1 dash, tau 1 2, tau 1 3, tau 2 1, tau 2 2 dash, tau 2 3, tau 3 1, tau 3 2, tau 3 3 dash plus s dash, s dash I have already defined is equal to 1 0 0 0 1 0 and 0 0 1. So we can see that this tau effective has become the tau d effective plus tau s dash effective. And also the tau s effective is basically s dash multiplied by i3. Here I can write this matrix as i3 that is what has been stated. 
Now one interesting observation note that the tau dd effect tau d effective is same as the tau d. Tau d effective is the pore pressure case and that matrix is basically same as the tau d but the no pore pressure case. So the deviatoric stress components in terms of matrix remains the same but the spherical stress component the tau s and that matrix is not equal to tau s dash effective. So having said this I am asking the viewers to do a very simple thing. What is the relation between S and S dash find out and what is the relation between tau S and tau S dash that also you have to find out. Let us look at other interesting things about the second rank tensors. The tau effective in the pore pressure case can be written in this way the tau matrix where no pore pressure is acting plus minus pp minus pp and minus pp in the diagonal and rest of the shear terms are all 0 and when the effect of pore pressure acts then the tau effective will be this plus that and this I have actually demonstrated already but it was another way of writing tau effective will be equal to tau this matrix minus pp multiplied by i3 because I can take minus pp out and then it becomes 1 1 and 1 rest are zeros. So, this is one another way of writing. Note that the effect of pore pressure only if I look at it will be a spherical tensor and there is no guarantee that this one is a spherical tensor. Now, we are posing a question is it possible to have tau d equal to 0 that means the deviatoric stress matrix all the elements are 0 is it possible the answer is yes consider this case sigma 0 0 0 sigma 0 and 0 0 sigma this means what there is a body in which we are applying let us say compressional stresses at 3 perpendicular directions no shear stresses are acting. This is the well known case of hydrostatic stress regime or the lithostatic stress regime. In that case what happens sum of these 3 sigma plus sigma plus sigma is equal to 3 sigma and I divide by 3 to find the arithmetic mean that becomes sigma bar is equal to sigma itself. Now how much is the deviatoric stress sigma minus the sigma bar which means it is 0 this one is 0 and that one is 0. So the deviatoric stress tensor becomes a matrix with all the elements 0. So this is the meaning of saying tau d equal to 0 and what is the mean stress tensor this is actually same as what was given the original one is stated basically the original matrix is stated and then plus all the 0 elements are added up this is this can be called also as a mean stress tensor this is a spherical tensor. Now note that sigma 1 1 equal to sigma 2 2 equal to sigma 3 3 is equal to sigma does not guarantee a zero deviatoric stress regime. What it means consider this case where these are the same sigma 1 whereas the shear stresses are very much present on the cube. Now in this case what happens if I break this into two parts as sigma d and sigma s then here the arithmetic mean of these three is sigma 1. Now sigma 1 minus sigma 1 will be 0. So, this is the deviatoric stress matrix and then we will have sigma 1 multiplied by I3 is a spherical component of the stress. Now, you can see although these terms have become 0 in the deviatoric stress the shear stresses are very much existing. So, I cannot say that the deviatoric stress matrix can be represented by only zeros. This is the meaning. These are easy things but it is important that the geoscience students particularly the geology students keep practicing and they become fully conversant with the fundamentals. Is it possible to have a stress regime in which the spherical stress component is equal to 0? In other words this actually means the 3 into 3 matrix with all the elements equal to 0. Is it possible? The answer is yes and giving you some example consider this where 
sigma 1 1 equal to sigma 2 2 equal to sigma 3 3 equal to 0 and there are some positive or negative terms as the shear stresses. So, that is what we can say now if I add all of them it will be 0. So, the mean of 3 of them will be equal to 0. So, the deviatoric stress will be 0 minus this average which is 0. So, this one this one and this one in these three directions uh, direction 1, 2 and 3 the deviatoric stresses will become 0. So, now if I break the sigma in terms of the deviatoric stress and the spherical stress the deviatoric stress will be component will be same as this matrix. This matrix is here I have not written it will be basically the same thing and the same thing will be over here no change and I have to add all the zeros here. Remember this were supposed to be the deviatoric stress components and I have found all of them are zeros. Now also we can look at this uh, sigma we can start with here this one of them is 0 and sum of the two is 0 so that the total sum is equal to 0 same thing happens over that matrix. And also if I take another stress matrix where none of them are zeros yet if I sum them up the total sum becomes 0. In that case also we will find that the given stress sigma is equal to this itself as the entire deviatoric stress and 0 elements inside this spherical stress tensor. Now what this means I can physically explain. What we can say from the point that sigma s equal to 0 it is possible when naturally sigma i i i runs from 1 to 3 and a sum up that means sigma 1 1 plus sigma 2 2 plus sigma 3 3 equal to 0. I have shown 3 examples of how it is possible. Sigma 1 1, sigma 2 2, sigma 3 3 all of them can be zeros. any one of them can be 0 or their sum can be 0 while each of them is non-zero. But it is not possible that 2 of them are 0 and 1 is having some value because in that case the sum will never be equal to 0. So, this is not possible. So, in such a situation what happens the spherical stress component the tensor all the elements become 0. One good example I can cite let us get back to the cube there is a compressive stress of 7 unit acting here is a compressive stress normal stress acting of 5 unit 7 plus 5 is equal to 12 and here instead of compressive I am giving an extensional minus 12 unit of stress. Note this is axis 1 this is axis 2 and axis 3 what we this was our starting configuration of axis when we started discussion with the tensors. So, here sigma 1 1 is equal to 7, sigma 2 2 I can take as minus 12 and sigma 3 as 5. The idea is that compressional and extensional stress will be given opposite sign. So, in that for that reason this 7 and 5 are positive this is minus 12 or what I can write I can write this as minus 7 this as plus 12 and that as minus 5. So, now what happens if I sum them up in this sign convention or in that sign convention the sum becomes 0. So, in this case the spherical stress each of the uh, elements in the tensor will become 0. So, this is the example and what this indicates sigma s is equal to 0 for any stress matrix that there is no tendency of the body to maintain the same shape in such a stress regime. We have seen the stress tensor where each of the elements within the stress matrix have a crisp value definite value. What if we do not know the specific magnitude of stress rather a range of stress magnitudes are known. In that case the tau 1 matrix can be stated by two numbers in each of the elements. So, this we know is our tau 1 1 the normal stress acting on a plane perpendicular to the axis 1 and also in the direction of 1 the maximum amount of stress that acts is 5 and the minimum can be 2 it is varying between 5 and 2 I do not know exactly how much is it it can be 2.7 it can be uh, 4.6 unit as well. So, in that case we can write all the elements by two numbers within the matrix there is a case where I am writing 7 comma 7 that means here we are certain that 7 unit of stress is acting which we can call as tau 2 2. There are some positive numbers such as 5 2 but there are also some negative numbers. Negative numbers indicate what? 
we have already made a convention that if this is the cube, this is direction 1, direction 2 and direction 3. If the stress is acting towards the positive direction of the 1, 2 and 3 axis such as this direction will be taken as positive. So the negative one can indicate a or any of the negative can indicate the stress is acting in this direction. So now the similarly suppose there is another tau 2 another stress regime is given which is coaxial with tau 1 and tau 2 and tau 1 will be imposed on the same cube. The question is how to write the resultant tau matrix. One of them I can solve and I will request the readers to think very critically about it. I take here the tau 1 1 value and here this is the tau 1 1 dash value. So the maximum amount is 5 here the maximum amount is 4. So in this case 5 plus 4 is equal to 9 and 2 plus 3 equal to 5. 9 comma 5 will be the entry for the resultant tau and its tau 1 1 dash 9 comma 5. I can take this one no stress is acting no shear stress is acting and it is definite that there certainly there is no shear stress is acting it is not varying and here it is 2 comma 3. So they can be summed up 2 plus 0 equal to 2, 3 plus 0 is equal to 3. So I can write here 2 comma 3. What is that? This we call as the tau 3 1 and this is called the tau dash 3 1. So we have got here the tau double dash 3 1. So now in this way you have to think critically and write down the tau matrix. We have to be careful while adding. Is it that always the maximum will be added with the maximum and the minimum will be added with the minimum. Also note that there are opposite directions minus 7 and then minus 10 these terms are also there. So if this problem is stated in a bit different way more compact way tau 1 there are two elements tau ij max and tau ij mean and tau 2 has tau ij max dash tau ij mean dash. So what will be the expression of tau 1 plus tau 2 individual elements tau equal to what will you write as a formula. Now I will take the multiplication between a second rank tensor tau 1 and a scalar m. Let us say all these stresses, all these components are increased by multiplied by 3. So in that case m will be say equal to 3. What to do? Basically I have to put that m inside for the maximum term whatever is there multiplied by m comma m multiplied by tau ij minimum. For example, if I write from there the tau 1 will be equal to I am multiplying by 3. So first element I can demonstrate 5 comma 2 will become 15 comma 6 and if I take this one 0 0 no change happens. Okay. So this is our tau triple dash 1 1 and this is our tau triple dash 2 1. So in this way you have to complete the entire tau 1 matrix. We can call this as tau triple dash and this will be called as tau triple dash. I hope now the symbols are matching with each other. So what I have said about multiplication same thing will work for the division for example m multiplied by suppose I write instead of this m to the power minus 1 no problem then I will put minus 1 here accordingly changes can be made 
and what I told in terms of addition tau 1 plus tau 2 think very critically tau 1 minus tau 2 is equal to tau 0 is equal to how will you write the formula from these two what formula you will write down and then you have to write down the matrix tau 0 matrix as well this is I am giving for you and